What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Wednesday night edition of REI Genius, where we bring on great people, great operators, great real estate professionals to help you build wealth uh, and uh, continue to build your real estate portfolio. So tonight we're talking about online marketing and uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit. We had one guest scheduled for tonight, but um, I think we're going we're gonna to change it up. We had some conflict issues that popped up which is all good because guess what? You guys get a treat, whereas I'm going to actually walk you through my $0 marketing cost strategy that I've been using for years and years to uh, to get deals. We just used this. I think we got three deals within the last 45 days. Um, it comes in spurts. But the thing is, you have to, one, be consistent. You know, two, you have to know your numbers, know your buy box. And if you don't know what a buy box is, you need to jump. Make sure you jump into the REI Genius community. We talk about buy boxes. We talk about how to buy. We talk about all those those things that go into understanding your real estate market. And after you know your market, then now you just got to make more offers and stop making excuses if you want to be successful. Period. That's it. We got to make more offers and less excuses, and you're gonna be good to go. And so tonight I'm gonna show you my strategy that I use. Um, my primary tool. You can you know if you got a realtor that's on top of the game. That's going to send you updates as soon as things hit the market. That's perfect. But I like to use Zillow. You know, it's right there on my phone. I can use my app. But when I wake up, you know, say my prayers, you know, I hit Zillow, look at it. Um, if I'm being um, diligent in my, my process that I go through my morning routine, sometimes I may have to wait till I get in the parking lot at work and just glance at my phone. If I get there early enough, um, here lately, it's been a little little touch and go with getting there just in the nick of time type deal, but that's okay. Um, you're not going to be a hundred every day. Or sometimes I may, I may be really, really slacking and I don't look at my buy box until like lunchtime. I go back out to my car and jump on the phone and look. But the thing is, you got to look, you got to take a look and you got to understand what's going on. And each, each property is going to have a story and uh, we need to un better understand that story, the seller behind the story and understand what is the motivation for that seller for selling that property on the MLS. And the way that we're able to get a lot of that information is working directly with the listing agent. And so that's one of the strategies that I encourage you all to take a look at is looking at building relationships. Because if you don't have a lot of money, the thing that you got to realize, you got to be, you got to learn how to, to leverage other people's time. And what better person can you leverage to get deal flow than a realtor, than a broker? Um, if we start talking about on the commercial side, it's the same thing. It's the same type of relationship. Um, we're just talking as a single family compared to multifamily. The only thing that's different is the asset class, but the same uh, driving factor underlying relationship needs to be there and it needs to be strong. And if you have a strong foundation, then you have something to build on. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to kind of walk through my process, my market, and, uh, and just kind of show you all how I go through and kind of make an assessment or where things are um, from a real estate perspective. And so my tool of choice is Zillow. You can use Redfin, Realtor.com. I don't think it really matters, um, just as long as you get access to the data. Um, so for me, my buy box, you can see already what pops up, 32404. That's, they are, Zillow already knows that I'm looking for properties under 200000 right here. That's for sale. I'm not looking at for rent for so, what's well, sold. I can look at those uh, to understand, hey, if I'm going to look at doing a bird strategy where I buy it, I renovate it, I refinance it, I rent it out, and I repeat, then I might care what the rents are in that area. Um, so that's something I can look at. But then also for sold, if once I identify the property, if I don't know what's sold recently, if I haven't really been looking at it um, as I should, then I can go and look and see what exactly what's sold, pull my comps, Days on market, we look to try to stay below six months if possible. Um, where we start looking at trying to compare uh, like similar properties, but then also within 250 square feet, either below or above, um, when we start looking to try to come out our properties. But for me in my market, under 200k, that's where my fixer uppers that I focus on. I, my my um, my primary buyer on the retail side are first time home buyers. Um, you know, right now, Panama City, they still have a lot of grant programs for to get people into homes um, after Hurricane Michael. So that's that's who my avatar is. That's who I'm looking to sell to. Um, I don't really care about bed and baths. You know how many you know, we've, we've renovated two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bed, bedrooms. Um, doesn't matter. 
Um, I take lots and land out just because it just it, it 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 clutters my data. Right now, I got 17 results. If I put that in, it's probably going to at least 4x. It's going to go from 17 to 100. Wow. 17, so it 10x. It went to 175 when you start talking. So it's a lot of vacant land, a lot of lots out there, but I don't really care about that. Uh, if you take manufacturer homes out, which I'm fine with, with taking on manufacturer homes, that's not a problem. So we can leave it at that. If you had to narrow it down, you could continue to down select. Maybe you just want to focus on townhouses. If you're in an expensive market like Washington, D.C., like, hey, I'm only looking at the townhouse market, which usually they're a little bit um, cheaper than traditional homes, single family homes. But for me, hey, this is my buy box. So you see this one here? I didn't catch this one this morning. It came on um, about four hours ago. So 285 Sakoshi Drive B. So I know right exactly where that's at because we own 305 Sakoshi Drive. And I think and we're getting $1,500 a month rent for a two bedroom, two bath townhouse over there. Uh, so it's, it's, it could be, a, it's could be, definitely be a solid rental, but that's overpriced. I already know from just looking at that. Um, that uh, now I'm curious. We can do that and see. See where exactly we're at today. Oh, so they got the old we bought it for 75 estimate 155. Okay, yeah. So we this was one that we actually we bought. We did a burst strategy on this. And we bought it for 75,000 back in October 21. Um, wasn't terrible. I think we put about 35,000 into this property, and it's about probably about, yeah 160 170 for the townhouse right now. That's how the condition it was in when we originally bought it. Um, so I kind of know that 113 isn't going to work in, in that market, in that neighborhood, uh, for that property. So you can go past that, continue to look. And what else do we have over here? Not too much else. That's lining up. All right. So that's three, two, four, oh, four. Wasn't a whole lot there. Now we're going to go over three, two, four, oh, five. Okay. We got something there. 199, 185. Only 26 results, so not a whole lot under 200,000, which is fine. 140 plus, those are new modular homes, modular homes, and nothing, ain't nothing under 200K. Yeah, there's another one, 1788, too big, too bad. I've seen that one. It needs to be way cheaper. It's a fixer upper, but it's, it's definitely it's overpriced. Needs new kitchen, new floor, new bathroom. Yeah, but yeah, nobody's paying one ninety nine for that because you're gonna have to put at least forty thousand in it to completely remodel the place. And our last zip code is, and this this is how fast it goes. You know, you check your buy box, nothing comes on. Then um, it's like okay, there's nothing there. On to the next one. This one here, I've seen this one just drop from like one fifty. Oh, they relisted it, but they're down to one thirty five now. That's a modular home as well. I thought it was a true single family, but I talked to the guy. They're not really motivated. Uh, this one, I saw this one, not my jam. I, li I like to be on a slab if can I can most part, but this is just like, yeah, you could do something with that three, two, but it's super small and it's going to take a lot of work. And I'm not that motivated to do that type of deal just because you run into a lot of issues with the resale, just because the neighborhood, if you walk the street that is like, it didn't have a paved road here. Then you got like a lot of trailers and uh, kind of smaller homes that are re really, really old. Um, and so you're not going to be able to get that strong after repair value. This one here, it's, it needs to be down probably about 105, 110 to be a, a deal. And, uh, you know, you kind of go through, it's like, okay, that's it. That's it. That's what's in the market. And so that's, that's the thing that we look at. But one of the strategies is what I do. We'll take, for instance, um, a property that we have under contract. Or better yet, I'll just use one that we uh that tell the story that was the one that we we actually bought last month uh with this strategy with not nine one five, what is it, five oh seven? You got let me know if we have any questions, Faye. Um, so this property here said it came on the market, it was listed at one thirty nine nine. Um so it had to be it had to be right before Memorial Day holiday. But, you know, when I saw this, I'm like 139, okay, 1522 ARV, um, 230 to 240. And the, really the thing that, that I saw when I scrolled down, it's like, okay, it has a new roof, it's new siding, new windows, new HVAC, 
it just needs sheetrock paint floors and these kitchen cabinets the tub is uh the tub tub and the uh shower you can just we can keep those existing so i'm like okay i'm liking what i'm seeing the electrical is already done as well too walls insulated so i'm like boom we just need to come in here and um and just take this canvas and just you know build it back out you know and so that's one of the things that looked at me that was appealing like okay 139 that's a little bit on the higher side and um but when i went down and i went through the comps let's see if you can still see it but there was a a townhouse that sold for 220 that was i think about 300 here it is right here yeah so it's about 200 square feet smaller uh roughly was that 1522 so yeah so a little bit over 100 square feet smaller but it's over 156 so 219 that's a strong comp right down the street um a couple doors down and i know with my cost if we're just coming in sheetrock that we could be somewhere you know around 30 to forty thousand dollars for the renovation um with just flooring new kitchen and uh putting the tile not tile but putting the sheetrock back in and painting so with that now it's like okay i need to call and talk to the, the listing agent and see what's going on lo and behold i call and i know the listing agent and guess what the listing agent was the owner too and he's an investor and so we chatted and we, we already knew each other we had met back in 2017 when i first moved to panama city and went to my first real estate investor meetup networking out there getting to meet people in the community and i met him and his wife who were both agents and uh when i when i call and i uh was like hey you know so and so saw this he was like hey johnny he's like man where you been at he's like i hadn't seen you i'm like man i'm in i'm in dc now and uh we just started chit chatting and stuff so he told me about the price and uh what he was looking to get he had started renovation had two new construction deals going on right now and uh, a couple other rentals that he was repairing he had owned this place since like the early 90s and just had been sitting around hadn't got to it and so we just talked went through i initially came in told him you know be i would be at 129 um all all me, me paying all closing costs you know that's one of the things that i always like to tell buyers when i buy it, i'm gonna pay the closing costs one i want to use my title company to make sure title is good to go but then two that uh it makes it that much more competitive um because now you you got a couple thousand dollars to play with whereas the other investors have another agent bringing them and so the premise behind all of this when we start talking about this strategy with zillow and what i do is uh i have the listing agent i, I represent myself i don't have a, a agent that represents me when i buy so whenever i go out here and find these listings i go direct to the listing agent and i tell them hey yep i don't have a realtor you can be my realtor because a lot of times if the realtor is not the owner that uh the seller's going to pay their commission and guess what now they don't have to split it with anybody and so it works out really really well so lo and behold he came back he said hey i got another i'll offer you know i want to do highest and best you know come back let me know what's the most you can pay i said hey we can pay 135 i pay all the closing costs and do it and we wanted to deal by like less than a thousand dollars um just by you know me not having an agent represent me and them not having and not having to pay them that he didn't have to worry about that 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 put us over the top you know being able to just have to pay that extra you know couple grand um is actually beneficial and so we we're able to get the deal done but that's how you can go and leverage zillow and you know get listings that come on the market work directly with the listing agent understand your market your buy box what you're looking for check it every day and when the deal comes out there hey call the listing agent don't be shy let them know what you're looking for and every time that you do that just you put an offer on on a property even if you don't get it now you got one other set of eyes another realtor that's in your pocket that you can follow up with that knows what you're looking for in the market and they can bring you deals the next time they get something and so it's, it, it just you have to continue just get out there even if it says pending i would call them like hey you know what can i do next time that could be make my offer more competitive and just build that relationship because right now where we are in the market with as you see already that there was limited houses in the inventory under 200k that you got to make yourself stand out you got to make sure that your company stands out um and what better way you know in this type of environment where you can get deals for free with paying zero money for marketing just by being able to build relationships with people and you know one of the other listings that we 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 just got on a contract over the weekend was with one of the foreclosure specialists that lists foreclosures for the banks in my market I'm like how cool is that now we actually went and we got a listing a listing with this guy that we're buying a property and he's he represents a lot of the banks that bring foreclosures to the market and just building relationships so i encourage you guys to kind of think about this free marketing strategy that has worked tremendously 
um, over the years that helped me continue to build my business, grow it to the level uh, where we're at right now. Um, and, you know, just for the recognition in the community with, uh, you know, we just partnered with the assisted living facility in the Panama City Beach area that we have a one year contract with them, whereas that we're going to be providing um, free consultations to their clients that are coming in that are looking to move into the facility that need to liquidate um, their homes. And so we we provide free uh, price updates on their property as is, you know, we provide services. We're helping them relocate uh, whether it's moving personal property out of the homes and then Think about it, you all. If you find one one deal with one investor that you build a relationship with, well, that investor has like a portfolio of 20 or 30 properties. And now when they get ready to start unloading those properties that they think of you top of mind because you provided them paramount customer service. You went the extra mile to help them. You know, you closed on their timeline, whether they wanted to be fast or whether they want to close slow. And, um, and you just built their rapport and you followed up with them and they had a good experience with you. That goes a long way. So well, that ought to be said, building relationships is the number one free key marketing tool that you have in your toolbox that you need to leverage going into the rest of 2023, hands down, that you can be, you can, yeah, the sky's the limit. You're only limited by as many as uh, brokers that you can call, agents that you can call in order to do deals. And so that's one of the things that uh, that I just wanted to kind of share with you guys from the free side of it. When it starts talking about marketing, there's so many other strategies when it comes to marketing. Well, right now I have a, you know, I have a team member that's in the Philippines that we that primarily his job is just cold calling and sending text messages direct to owner. That uh, you know, that's one of our marketing strategies. Of course, like I just shared with you, my free strategy that you guys can use right now immediately is, you know, how do you go through? And there's a lot more to it, you know, when you start talking, well, hey, what do you say on the phone? You know, what are some of the key things, the questions that you want to ask? The realtor, the one, so you can a little bit learn a little bit more insight on them. But what are the questions that you ask to learn more about the property, so you can make an informed decision quickly without actually having to go in? Because we've gotten properties under contract um, and kind of took it off the market where nobody else could go and view it, even before my contractors even stepped foot into the property. Because I tell you all, I'm 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 15, 16 hours away from Panama City. I'm not even operating there um, in person. And so it's all about leverage, putting your team together and being able to make decisions quickly. That gives you that leg up. That can mean the difference in, you know, being able to get, you know, two extra deals a year. If you're making forty five thousand dollars a deal, two extra deals a year, that's that's an extra ninety thousand dollars in your pocket by you just being able to move quicker and being able to put the information together to make a decision. And, you know, now with the way things are going, things being a little bit slower that now you don't have to be as aggressive you know, you can still have time in there for, um, you know, your due diligence and inspections. And usually once we get under contract, we're like, hey, you know, even before we sign the contract, we're like, hey, if you can get my guys in today or tomorrow, you know, we can go ahead and waive the inspection clause. As long as they get in there, I trust their judgment. They know what we're doing. That is not a problem. Um, so let's see. Let's see what we got here in the comments. What's up, people? Let's see, can you look at Atlanta? Oh, OK, let's let's go. Let's go. 3314. Sure, we can take a look at that. Let's see any other questions before we dive into that one um, that I can answer. Yeah, yeah, free. It's always good. You know, and that's the thing. Like you can you can do free consultations and help people. Like I talk to so many real estate investors that aren't necessarily looking for coaching, which is fine. And that's why my mentorship is free. The community is free, just where that people can network that, you know, if you don't, the only reason you need me is like, hey, if you need me to look over your shoulder, you need a consultant. That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to pay me for my time. But outside of that, you know, 15 minutes here and there, I'm like, yeah, I can give you suggestions and do that. But if you need someone to hold your hand, you want to go deep, you want to build a business, you want to help with putting your processes, your systems together, then, you know, it's going to be a different conversation. But always look to lead with value. Always look to, you know, provide value to people just like today. You know, right now we're, we're talking marketing. I'm sharing with you guys some of the things that I use in my business right now that, uh, you know, it could help somebody. You know, it, it's, it's nothing for sharing information to help somebody level up. So I think if you go that that far, the people will be more inclined to work with you uh, when they do need some of your paid help. Um, so I think that's definitely, you know, a, a strategy. Just being able to get in front of more people and add value to people um, with whatever you're doing. You know, whether it's real estate we're talking about tonight. 
but anywhere that goes for any business if you look at how you can add value and help improve the lives of anybody then you're gonna be you're gonna be good and that's all any business is you know you whether it's an iphone whether it's a restaurant they're solving a problem if you're a restaurant your people are hungry so you need to have good food or you know you iPhone people need to communicate they need access to information and um and they want to be tied to you know they love apple products and uh steve jobs so you know same thing with tesla that you just build community around the product and the, the people that you service that wears that if you have a quality product then you know you're gonna have a a, a strong a strong uh, consumer base so no most definitely all right i use that strategy i have five different realtors in augusta nice that's what i'm talking about let's go let's 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 go on and double that up let's have 10 by next month henry I, i'm gonna challenge you let's go on to, let's go on and move that up to 10 because i know where you i know where you're trying to go so i think you know having 10 having a 10 set of eyes out looking for everything that you're trying to do in in that market and probably another get another 10 in your other market that i think that's that's the goal maybe over the next quarter build up the team uh, you know, I, I know Henry's got a lot going on, so I'm going to give him to the end of the quarter to get there. Uh, but no, but I, I think that's what it's all about. He's doing the work. Like none of this stuff is rocket science, y'all. None of this. I, I'm not I, I'm, I won't say that I'm I'm not as smart as most people because I would be lying. But I see a lot of people that are not as smart as any other people or anybody else out here. And the strategy is like, you just got to show up. You just got to do it. You just got to pick up the phone and have a conversation and talk about it. And uh, it's not rocket science. You know, I tell y'all we're using fifth grade math when we're evaluating these properties. And, you know, and that's something that we can kind of walk through that. Um, I kind of showed y'all that one deal, um, but the other two, we got two to go through. And I can show you how, you know, the, go through the numbers, what the numbers look like and share that um, in the community. With, with everybody in the REI Genius community, because we be, we be going through and talking through. I'll jump on the live and just share what's going on in the business. Hey, we just got this done. We got this accepted. Um, so make sure y'all, if you shout out for uh, those that's on the fence, join the free mentorship community. We're building, people are connecting. We're providing resources to people. People are coming in and adding value to one another. And, uh, you know, I'm a true believer that iron shoppers iron. And so make sure you guys uh, jump in for that. And uh, let's dive into ATL. Let's go. Atlanta. What was that one zip code that we had? Let's see. Give me one second. 3314. Cool. We're about to go shopping. Who gave us this one? They want to come up. They want to come up on chat. What are we looking for? What are we looking for at 3314? All right, I'm gonna share my screen and yeah, feel free, whoever wants to look at that market, kind of tell us what they're looking for, um, if they want to share that. And uh, if not, we can just explore it and see what's going on. Let's see, 33, 40. Okay, so this kind of a tight, tight bubble. Where's this? Eight, there's a 20, 85. Okay, so this is right off downtown. Okay, there's Georgia Tech, Atlantic Station right here, um, Midtown. Okay. Airport's down here somewhere. Let's dive in a little bit closer. Washington Park. Okay, Atlanta University Center, Vine City, Dixie Hill. All right, so you got some houses there, 190, 199. Oh, wow, look at that, 189, 13 days. Would y'all pay 189 for that? Oh, my. That, uh, yeah, that definitely needs some work. But you look at it, location, location, location. You look at these areas here, it's not too far from Mercedes Benz Center, uh, where uh, the Falcons, was it, do the Falcons and the Hawks play there? Yeah, I don't know, they, uh, I don't know if they both play there or not, but I know definitely, uh, I think, I know the Falcons, that's, that's the football stadium, because Alabama plays there. But, uh, 
when they play in the, the bowl games in SEC. But yeah, 199, 165. Got a 31984. But the first thing you need to do when you're looking to see um with this market. So I, I hadn't looked at this market before. So the first thing I want to see, boom, let's do this real quick. Let me see what's selling transactions. All right. So it's a lot that sold on the 200 k I'm going to look to see apartments, manufacturer. I just want to see town the houses. Because we are, we're going to flip houses here in this zip code. We want to go in. And I want to see sold in the last 90 days. All right. That'll clean it up. All right. See if we can find some flips that's uh, that's happened over here. Okay. That looks like one. Three, two, so. Sold for 155 in May. I can't see. Oh, there's one. 213. See, so what we're going to look for first is, okay, what was the price per square foot? Built in 38. All right. I'm being lazy now. I use the calculator myself. And, uh, but yeah, you want to understand your price per square foot. So this, so crap. And they would not have the square footage up there. Son of a gun. Let's find the other one. Ah, two months ago. 283. Wow, 940 square feet sold for 283,000. Let's go. All right, so that's $301 a square foot. Let's see what that said on the map. Just to verify. So we're going to take that. You would normally want to get at least three or four comps, but for the sake of time, we're going to just say we're going to roll with $300 a square foot. And uh, we're going to just verify that it didn't take us outside our zip code. Yep, nope, they kept us in the same zip code. Perfect. So $300 a square foot. Now let's go back and look at what we got for us listings. And selling for $300 a square foot. So we let's look at this one here. 165. What we what we do? I think that one that I like that. It's got it's got decent bones. It's not terrible, but it's dated. It's got a good shell that you can that you can use. So we know 300 square foot, 909 times 300. It's gonna put us at 272 ARV. We're going to do around 270. We're going to do the 75% rule. So we need to be all in 204. That's going to be tight. So 204, and we got to put, we're going to say 50,000 into this house. It needs a roof. Um, kind of reconfigure the, the floor plan a little bit, probably. Um, maybe not, but you could tear that wall out there. Maybe try to reconfigure. You're going to definitely reconfigure that kitchen and open that up. You almost were probably. You keep it a two one, so you gotta look at the design and everything with that. But when you start looking at changing the floor plan, that's more money. We're gonna say we can get it, get in. We got a really good crew, um, and and we can get in and out for fifty thousand. So if we were all in. We sold this property, we bought it, and we put fifty thousand in it. So seventy five percent of that two seventy is two hundred four minus the renovation costs minus fifty thousand equals. 154 so not too far off we had to put fifty thousand in it based off 300 dollars a square foot we could probably pay about 154 for this property here 
and uh, it it would be a solid deal. It would be a solid deal. So that that ain't too, too far off for a flipper um, in that area um, based off that $300 square foot. But, you know, if you have to put, you know, 70000 in it, then your max offer on this one would be 135 And so now you would just call that listing agent. Who's the listing agent for this one? And we would say, hey, it's been on 12 days. Okay. So amazing opportunity, up-and-coming neighborhood near Tyler Perry Studios and the west portion of the Beltline area, Diamond in the Rough, Fixer Up, Lowe's Potential. Okay. 48 saves listed by total investment property services. Okay. Uh, Sierra. So you need to call Miss Sierra and uh, inquire about that. But that's how you look at it. You know, you find this zip code for three, you know, so we know $300 a square foot. What just happened? $300 a square foot for these properties. And uh, oh my God, 530. That's got to tear that down probably. 536 square feet uh 125 let's see what else is over here 128 199 that ain't bad 140 right there i don't think that's bad at all for a thousand twenty six square feet we don't have any pictures of the inside but it's a little bit it's over a thousand square feet so that would arv would sell for a little bit over three hundred thousand um yeah you can't see the inside one is it um totally you know gutted inside and screwed up but it's only a thousand square foot so your costs aren't going to be astronomical with only renovating a thousand square foot home but you know you can look at you know tearing out this fence here bringing in some curb appeal um some plant shrubs out front and because uh, if you're going to be selling for a three hundred thousand dollar house, then you're going to need that. But it's got a nice size lot. That's a, that's a nice size lot. And yeah, so that might be a potential option right there on the fix and flip side. Um, you come in. How long? Been, how many days has this been on the market? You know, the longer it's on the market, the more negotiating power that you have um, as well, too. So that one's been on 20 days. Yeah, we come in like, hey, man, we'll buy one hundred and fifteen thousand. I'm telling you that um, you should be making some, I'm going to call it disrespectful. You should be making disrespectful offers that, you know, that right now where the market is, we're going to, you know, everybody's talking about high interest rates and where the market is that sellers, buyers, you have the upper hand, whether you know it or not. So, you know, somebody said they're, they're desperate. The house been out here for three days, for three weeks. The, their realtor told them they should have listed it for cheaper than that. Come in at 110,000. All they can say is yes or no, or say, hey, how about 115 and you can have it? It's like, okay, that works. It's a deal. But you got to make the offers. That's why I tell people you got to make offers and stop making excuses. Um, that's that's one of the models that we had in my uh my seven flip, seven figure flipping uh mastermind group that I was part of last year. It was like you, you just gotta make more offers and stop making excuses. So that's that's a potential deal there. Um, you go continue to go, you got to look on the inside and do your due diligence, but just looking a thousand square foot. Uh, we know if you can go in and squeeze in another third bedroom, that'd be even better. Um, and kind of go from there, but you got to start making offers and, you know, you may have to take 20,000 off just for it being a two bedroom, but that'll be, you know, for that entry level cost, you're going to have a starter home. Okay. Oh, whoa. what do we got here? 50,000. What's that? Let's see. Hold on. 50,000. Man, I already built in 07. Hold on. Something ain't right. Fairburn Road. Cabinets hanging off the wall, but 50,000 for is a rental property with cash flow. I wonder these condos. What's going on? Something ain't right. Something ain't right. 50K, 50K, 50K. Appendix L contingent. It's under contract in March, listing removed, April, back on. Hmm. Okay. So, but it's been on a month. Something ain't right. But got a call. There's another one over there, 58. Must be a heck of a neighborhood. But man, what's the rent over here? I know the rent's got to be at least a thousand dollars. 2x rule. If you're the rent's double. 
one percent of the uh the value i'm curious now but yeah this is what you do you just kind of dive into your market and see what's going on see the transactions that's happening out here um but i already know rent's got to be at least a thousand dollars that ain't bad you know a, a 2007 bill it's got to be more to the story we're missing something but that's why you call the agent to get the skinny on what's going on um because that could be a really really good solid rental property hold on forty thousand. I don't know. This must be this this neighborhood must be on first 48 or something. Something got to be going on that we miss it. Why would park town homes? Tell you what. Town homes. Eleven fifty nine forty nine nine hundred. I know rent, rent anywhere rent is like at least nine hundred dollars. So for fifty forty fifty thousand, I was interested in unit number. The unit is only fifty seven thousand. The townhouse was decent, up to date. From the picture scene, the only problem I have is they are co op, meaning you would never own the townhouse. So why do you have to put down fifty sixty percent? That puts down about thirty two thousand for a down payment on the unit that would never be yours. This is ridiculous. Ah, see, we knew it was something. We knew I knew it was something going on. Interesting. Oh well. 190. So we're still looking at neighborhood, you know, three hundred dollars a square foot. 128. Did somebody get started on this one and stop? Recent price cut. Oh, they got the 3D design of it over things. Yeah, somebody started on this and then finished it. Because why would you have a 3D design of this? They got the side and replace that wood. Yeah, that's the only thing with like some of these older homes that you got it's a lot of work that has to be done below it behind the scenes. But once again, disrespect for offer. Like, hey man, we'll give you 85000 for that house. Take it off your hands right now. And you never know. They may say yes, and you got three hundred dollars a square foot times twelve eighty eight is. Three hundred times twelve eighty eight is um, three hundred. No, three hundred eighty six thousand. That's crazy. I can't believe the house is going for that in that area like that. But a comp is a comp. So just gotta look at it, see if hey if if they're they're renovating those houses and they're able to get it somewhere close on that street and you know you're just not in the Kadim neighborhood that yeah that's how you make money. That uh, buy low and sell high. So just find those areas in your city where progress is happening, where people are flipping homes. And, uh, and don't be afraid to do your homework and, and make your offers out there um, to get deals done. Now, that's a solid zip code. Um, you find the right project, the right street um, where work is happening at that uh, you can do good. What's up, Z? I see Z. Oh, I see Z. Z's right here. You ready to come up? Yes, sir. I'm here. Let's go. Let's go. I've been just going through and just showing people how we've been doing, how, how I kind of do my online marketing. I've been watching. I've been listening. Okay. Okay. For sure. Yeah, what you got? We got, we got like 20 minutes left. So did you want to yeah, just so talk or you want to share your slides? Um, I have a few slides that I can go through real quick if I can share my screen. Okay. Yep. Just hit that present button and present then and share, uh, and share screen. Okay. I'm going to share my screen and I want to. Let's go, Henry. No, can everybody dead. see my screen? Let's see. Can you Give see it my a screen? second.
Can you see my screen? Not yet. Up oh, there we go. I'm bringing. I'm adding it up now. There we go. Okay, it's coming up now. Yep. All right. So um, I can be a little uh, long-winded with my slides. So just stop me when. Um, stop me when uh, I uh, should or you need me to. And um, yeah, so my name is uh, Z Scott and um, I met Johnny at the JJ Conway's uh, Legacy, uh, Juneteenth Legacy Conference. And I was there to uh, spread the word about my conference that's happening on Saturday, July 22nd, which is a, a hybrid con conference. You can be in the room or in the Zoom and um, I know we only have a few minutes left, so I'm, I'm going to skip a few few slides. I want to just hop into the meet. I know you guys were talking about uh, marketing, and um, my presentation today is about uh, SEO or search engine optimization. And one of the challenges for businesses, regardless if you're selling houses, selling rent, selling places to stay, whatever the case may be, is uh, getting in front of enough people and also having enough time to create content and get the right type of content out so that your revenue grows. I mean, and the bottom line is you want to attract the right people to you at the right time so you can help them out with whatever uh, needs they have. And so SEO is really um, important to me. I started, uh, uh, started my tech journey as a toddler when I was at my father's uh, college graduation when he got his computer science degree and uh, he taught me everything I know about programming and I went to MIT and um, after three degrees, two from MIT, one from University of Michigan Ann Arbor, um, in 2017 I launched the SEO Queen. I was tired of uh, being uh, overworked and underpaid. Um, I'm sure you guys can relate to that. <laughs> Why you're why you guys are investors and so I launched the SEO Queen to help small businesses and to also uh, transform uh, my life and the life of those small businesses that I work with. And so since our launch, we've been able to generate a quarter of a billion dollars in revenue for our clients and uh, generate hundreds of millions of search engine results impressions. So when you look at different um, marketing channels and popularity. Social media is the number one in popularity. SEO is right on its heels. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. And this is what we call inbound lead generation. This is where you're attracting people to your business at the exact time that they're looking for your products and services. And they cost significantly less than radio, TV, or uh, billboard ads. And so um, inbound marketing delivers more leads into your marketing funnel than traditional outbound lead generation strategies. And um, when you couple your SEO with a blog strategy, you generate more website visitors as well. So SEO or search engine optimization defined is the process of developing a marketing or technical plan to improve the visibility of your website within one or more search engines. Um, Google is uh, the search engine with the most uh, market share right now. Um, when uh, the internet was uh, kicked off in the late 90s to a wide audience, uh, Yahoo, Dogpile, AltaVista, those were uh, big, um, search engines, but Google in the early 2000s quickly took over market share. So what is SEO? Like when you break it down into uh, steps, what is it? And it's this technical and content plan can be broken down into keyword research, on-page optimization, which is basically getting your content and code in compliance with Google's algorithms so that the keywords that people use when they're uh, looking for your website are implemented into the code in such a way where your website comes up. Link building is all about increasing the popularity and authority of your website so it pops up 
on search results. And, you know, digital PR is another link building strategy and strategic relationships is another link building strategy. And blogging is another content building strategy. And of course, the faster your website loads, the uh, more favorable search engines look at your, your uh, website and the higher up on search engine results you go. So when you have a website, if you build a website and you just put it out there, uh, organic search engine traffic isn't guaranteed. I know a lot of people, they build websites and they just uh, share it on social media and they wonder why isn't their website performing. Now, if you have a website and you put SEO on it, you definitely are getting more visibility in search engines and that's how you can attract more customers, clients and revenue. So SEO really is a game changer because only about 30% of your competition is, is using it. And 94% of people going to search engines trust organic results only. So even if you look at um, ads, Google ads as a strategy, uh, more people trust the organic results. So this is definitely a compelling um, investment of your time and resources. So here is a infographic of what um, the search engine results pages look like in the space where you put in your query uh, or your keywords. This is where um, uh, the rubber meets the road with the search engine. This is where the, act, that the action happens. And so you want to make sure that that query that people are putting into Google, that that keyword is at the beginning of your meta title and your it's in your URL or your website link and your link description or your meta description. Your keyword is very, very important. Now, if you're not using the keywords that people are searching for, you know, Google can't rank your website for what it can't see. If your website isn't submitted to Google, if you're not using the language that people are looking for you, Google can't rank what it can't see. And it needs to see your website. It needs to see the keywords that people are using to search your website on. How are we doing on time? John? No, you're good. You're good. Okay. All right. So here I have a case study. I worked with um, NS Design. Um, NS Design is an electric boat instrument manufacturer, uh, Beyonce, and along with uh, quite a number of other artists, Madonna, Lady Gaga, and, and um, uh, I think Living Color, and a bunch of other bands have used um, their instruments over the years. But um, the show that really sticks out in my mind is uh, Coachella, because um, all the string instruments on the stage uh, look familiar. And uh, I ended up, after I watched it, I, I contacted NS Design and I was like, was Beyonce using your instruments? And they're like, yeah, we had to keep it on the hush. And yeah, all the instruments on stage in the orchestra were all NS Design instruments from the electric violins to the violas to the cellos. And so this happened um, after we had been uh, working together and optimizing their website. And so the power of SEO is that um, their website became a viable revenue generating channel when it was just merely a brochure for their uh, distributors to get information. And now it's an e-commerce site that we optimize that's generate, generating revenue and um, reaching Beyonce's team. So they selected it. So here's a snapshot of some of the keywords that we've optimized over time. And as you could see in a few months, we went from not ranking to Google page one for many keywords here. And um, SEO will work for pretty much anything. Um, there's over 2 trillion searches that are happening on Google annually. And so what this means is um, if you can think of it, there is somebody talking about it or searching for it on um, search engines, including real estate to purchase and real estate to buy. And so here are three secrets on how to leverage SEO to increase your visibility online. 
Um, identifying your best keywords is very important. This is what people are using to find uh, your website online. And this is how you let Google know what your website should come up for. Um, if you're not sure what to write, um, you don't have to write your own content from scratch. Um, there are ways to identify what content um, should be created. And number three, uh, Google definitely knows what your ideal customers want and uh, will definitely tell you so. So um, the first secret, it's important to know your best keywords and your best keywords have a high search volume and a low competition level. And these are the keywords that have a high return on investment. And you can identify these keywords by going to tools like um, the uh, Google's AdWord tool. Um, you could go to keywordtool.io, um, SpyFu, and there's also a keyword suggestion tool on seoqueen.com. Once you've identified what keywords in the search volumes, then you can you utilize uh, these operators, which are free on Google to determine how much competition they have. When you identify a keyword and you type in all in title, colon, space, and then the keyword, that'll give you the number of websites that have that keyword in the meta title. So if a website is using um, that keyword in the meta title, more often than not, um, the title of the website indicates what those website owners' intentions are in terms of their SEO strategy. So um the lower the number the better the higher the number you you, you want to keep on looking and rule of thumb for me is like anytime you get over seven or eight hundred thousand uh results um if your website is fairly new i would uh lean towards a longer tail keyword that has less competition so all in url gives you the number of websites that has that target keyword in the actual URL or website link. So um, secret number two, you don't have to write your own content from scratch. You can dynamically update your website by inserting the code from hashaddit.com on your branded hashtag, like um, for REI community, if you're using that as a hashtag, you can um, grab the code from hashaddit.com, embed that on um, a page on your website, and it'll dynamically update. And so you don't always have to manually update your content. That's one way. Another way that you can um, create your, your content is um, you can utilize uh, the skyscraper method. Now, the skyscraper method is where you do your keyword research, then you go to Google, you see what content is ranking on Google page one for that. And then you see what aspect of the keyword that they did not address, and then write your content to build on that. Now you can now you can utilize tools like ChatGPT and others to get more ideas on what to say, but you definitely want to make sure that you edit, edit for clarity, edit for um, consistency for facts, because sometimes these uh, AI tools are off and even the rewriters sometimes don't have uh, cultural competency built into it. So you definitely want to use this to just develop a draft that you can then um, workshop quickly to something that is on brand and unique that you can deploy to your website. And so um, again, the skyscraper technique, um, you don't have to write your own content from scratch. You could start with the competitor's ranking content, spin it, edit it, and then um, you can also use your social media content feed to dynamically update your website as well. And um, just some steps on how to spin content the right way. This is the skyscraper method, <coughs> excuse me, um, spelled out. You identify Google page one content that is similar. You use a uh, spinner article rewriter like uh, spin rewriter or the tool here. You want to edit and verify originality. And then secret number three, Google knows what it wants and will tell you. And so you can 
do research for this by going to uh, Google's blog. You can look at your search console. You can see what phrases people are searching on and what's being pulled up on your website. And you can build out content to answer and um, match to those keywords. Excuse me. And then you can also use, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> your Google My Business uh, profile as well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Well, <coughs> excuse me, I had more to say, but uh, my, my cough is, won't let me be great. <coughs> Excuse me. No worries. <coughs> well, thank you again, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, no problem. What's the uh the bit um the link for uh the upcoming <laughs> workshop that you got coming on on the the weekend of the twenty second? Um, definitely share that with everyone. Um, perfect. And uh, so people can tap in. And uh, yeah, it gets so she's got vir virtual options as well. I appreciate the uh, the game. I got I got to step it up. The uh, hash added.com. I got to go through with leveraging my SC, my uh, my social media feed and adding that to the website. That's a must um, that I picked up. Yeah, and if if people want to um, get a copy of the slides. You can let me put this in chat. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely and we'll we'll post that in the community for everyone so they can get a copy of the slides. That'll be valuable because I know you have some really good links, some of the tools out there they can leverage. Um where uh yeah, you can kind of go go through and do this. So how how can they get in touch with you if it's something like they, they want to leverage your to your uh agency to kind of help with the SEO for their, their website? What would be the best way to kind of connect with you? Um, you could always reach out to me personally. Um, you could text me at 562-225-6760 or just go to my website, seoqueen.com, and click on Speak to the SEO Queen. Okay. Or you can email me. But um, getting on my schedule or texting me is the fastest, fastest way to get in contact with me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, no, I think the, uh, where, where do you kind of, you know, I, I'm fine with us going over a little bit, but I think where do you see um, any changes or pivots that, you know, operators or business owners kind of need to make going into the second half of 2023? Um, are there any, like any big changes with like the uh, FCC or anybody, anything like that? Um, Cause I know a lot's changing with AI and different things online. Yeah, I think it's really important for business owners to optimize their online presence um, because the the landscape is changing so much, but Google is here to stay. And just being found within platforms, understanding how to optimize yourself for how people are searching for you is very important. YouTube is a search engine. Amazon is a search engine. If you have books on Amazon, being able to optimize your presence there, your products there, being able to optimize yourself on Instagram is important because people are going to be searching from that, from yesterday to today and in the future. People are always going to be, as long as there's information being generated, there's always going to be a need for people to optimize to be found. No, I love that. You know, and I think that's the thing now is like, what better return on investment than having organic search out there where people that are looking for your product that can find you without having to spend a whole lot of marketing dollars that, uh, you know, I think right. that's one of the things now we, we're talking about a recession and interest rates are high on the real estate side. But now it's like, OK, how can you still expand your business, expand your reach despite the recession? Because there's still going to be more people in need that need to sell, that need our services more so than ever, that this is the time right. to expand and, and not contract. Exactly. So, you know, during, you know, times of economic uncertainty, those who invest strategically into their marketing are the ones who are going to win. And so just making sure that you're visible online is so, so important. Um, if you have a brick and mortar office, it's important for you to optimize your citations. 
Um, it's important to have your name, address, and phone number on your website. It's important to have it um, on, you know, yellowpages.com and the ecosystem of citation websites. Um, I wanted to share more about that, but started coughing. But <clears throat> yeah, no you can always book a, a free a free consultation with me, and I'd love to step you through that. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely, I encourage you guys to kind of definitely. Tap in with Z um, as you're looking to build out your SEO. That's something that I'm going to work with the team that, that we're going to continue to do because I think it's a great way um, when you start. I was over here Googling, you know, just real estate education and things like that with just, you know, because we I want people to understand the community that we have out here and how can we expand our reach to help more people when it comes to real estate investing. And a uh, yeah, great way is referrals and people. I, I tell people, mm -hmm. hey, if you know a friend that wants to invest in real estate, share the REI Genius community. Um, by all means. Um, but what you were going to say about that? I was going to say blogging is so, so important. Um, I know I talked about it briefly, but when people get their questions, uh, when they have questions, if nobody in their immediate circle can answer those questions, the next th place they turn is Google. And if mm -hmm. you are answering those questions, um, you're ahead of the curve. Because a lot of businesses don't invest in blogging. And so by you um, putting your expertise out there, instead of having those side conversations that I know we all like to have, put it out there in a public format, into a block format, and so that you can be seen by people who are looking for you, and that'll help to increase the number of leads in your funnel as well. Blogging. That's it. It's just the basic. Just get good at the basic stuff. And just, mm -hmm. I think... And I, and I, I, I assume, and I, I've heard it, but being consistent, being consistent with all this stuff is, is, is a key part of it as well, too. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Any questions from the audience? Anybody have any questions? We got five more minutes before we go over. But yeah, anybody have any marketing questions or anything that Z can share with um, and answer for you tonight? Definitely want to open it up for anybody that's in business right now that has like a specific question or anything that they may be going. While, we, while we're while waiting to see if anybody drops a question, Z, have you seen anything where like they change? Like if you have like a P.O. box at the UPS store and, you know, like with getting your... Uh, business profile is there any way to get around that right now with google where you can still set your verified at your business location where you can get reviews and everything set up you know that that google my business profile has been um google has been uh cracking down on that okay and um i i actually use a uh virtual um, office space. Okay. And um, that's, I would recommend do, doing like a virtual space versus a PO box. I think okay. because I haven't had any problems with the virtual space. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's something that I think you definitely need to look at. Yeah, but um, the, the Google My Business profile, read those terms of service and, and, once you get it live, don't mess with it. Yes. <laughs> don't mess with it. For sure, for sure. Well, I definitely appreciate you dropping through and uh, and giving us some wisdom. I definitely uh, took a lot from it and took some notes that uh, I have to talk to my team our next meeting to go through and see some things that we can improve on. And, uh, yeah, and we'll definitely – uh, reach out and kind of share and put the conference out there. I'll definitely be sharing some of the stuff. Um, and uh, I know we'll probably have a few people that will tap in oh, with the online man. version. I don't know if I mentioned it, but um, Boyce Watkins is going to be speaking at my conference too. Oh, cool, cool. He's going to be speaking. No, that's going to be that's going to be good. I think wherever Boyce speaks, that he always uh, he brings a wealth of information and knowledge. And that, yeah, it's just being able to get in the room and especially when you start talking about, I got to go to a conference in New York City at the end of the month for uh, diversity and commercial real estate. But it's mm -hmm. just, you know, being in, talking, networking with people, building relationships and uh, just getting this information. Just like all this get value that you provided tonight. 
but just being able to connect with people that uh it just goes a long way yes it does and um yeah thank you for all that you do because you definitely uh make it a lot simpler because i i'm preparing myself to start investing as well expand sure. my real estate portfolio come on come on through no most definitely that's what it's all about yeah we got a great community continue to grow and uh yeah i'm excited marketing yeah. so that's it uh, make sure you guys for those that's interested on the multifamily side we got the cohort that's going to be launching here in a couple weeks toward the end of july uh, with my rei accelerator plus the six month multifamily uh program so that is going to be super dope i'm excited about that um, so make sure you guys jump on my calendar. Let's have a conversation if you're interested in um, in kind of invest, learning how to invest in multifamily and doing that. And um, yeah, and we'll see you guys at the next master class that we'll have. Uh, we'll see what the topic that we'll do next week. But uh, but yeah, y'all stay tuned and I'll see you guys inside the REI Genius community. Make sure you sign up for my free mentorship community. We'd love to have you guys come in, network, meet somebody that you didn't know and share and let us know what you need right now in your real estate investing journey um so we can kind of help everybody accelerate their wealth building process i'm johnny lino the military ceo y'all have a great night and we'll see you next time